Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. The Signal Oil Program. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, lie or consequences. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Presently, I'll tell you of nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Within the human character, the line between good and evil is a thin and waving one. And very often, the one small impulse for good will outweigh and nullify the bad. Such was the case with Michael Cobb. Mike wasn't bad, really. It happened while he was a kid before he knew any better. He'd gotten into trouble, gone to prison, served a stretch. Now he's out, and he's learned his lesson. He's proving that. He's going straight, working hard at his job in the office of a large department store. He's married to a girl he loves, and he's happy. Mm, delicious. Delicious. <laughs> oh, nobody can cook a better breakfast than you, darling. Thank you, sir. Now, Mike, <coughs> don't bolt your coffee. I gotta run. I'll be late. Well, a couple of minutes won't make any difference. Well, maybe not most days, but today is gonna be a big one. The last shopping day before Christmas, you know. Stores will be jammed. We'll be swamped with work until late tonight. Besides, I don't want to spoil my record. Six months and I haven't been late to work once. I know, I know. It's fine. I'm sure the store appreciates it. Yeah, Lane, I... I think they do, too. I really think they like me down there. You know, like my work and everything. Oh, sure, Mike. How could they help liking you? No, no, I mean, while I'm beginning to feel like all that stuff is all forgotten. Almost like something that never happened. It is. It is forgotten, Mike. Everything's different now. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, this is going to be a lot different Christmas than the last one, isn't it? Yes, Mike. You were wonderful, Elaine. Coming to see me, sticking by me. Oh, darling, I promise you there'll never be another Christmas like that. Never. I know there won't, Mike. From now on, they're, they're all going to be really merry Christmas. Yeah, you bet. Oh, gosh, that reminds me. I haven't got your presents yet. I'll have to run out my lunch hour and find something. Now, now, Mike, you're not going to go spending a lot of money on me. Oh, maybe next year we'll be more on no, our feet. No, no, never the... you mind. I'll get you what I done, please. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, I will be late if I don't run. Hey, hey, here's your, here's your hat. Oh, thanks. Well, goodbye, darling. Now, if I don't get home before midnight, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, it looks like a Merry Christmas for you at last, doesn't it, Mike? For the first time in your life, almost, a real Merry Christmas. You notice the smiles on people's faces as they walk down the street. You get sort of a kick out of the fancy red and green draped windows of the store. The holly smells good in the elevator. And you chuckle as you pass the toy department with a perspiring Santa Claus pulling on his red coat. Then into the office, everybody's smiling. Yeah, you know what, Mike? Maybe you're getting that thing they call the Christmas spirit. Well, morning, George. Merry Christmas. Hi, Mike. You're pretty cheerful this morning, aren't you? Oh, why not? It's almost Christmas, the day of good cheer. Well, what's the matter with you, sourpuss? Uh, nuts, humble. Uh-oh. The boss on the rampage again, huh? Yeah. Well, what is it this time? You haven't heard? No, what? Well, somebody lifted another thousand bucks out of the receipts last night. What, again? Yeah. It makes about ten grand that's been missing in the last six months. Well, no wonder Mr. Humboldt's upset. The detectives are in there with him right now, and they've got old Gus, a night watchman, in for questioning. I suppose we'll all be on the carpet like the last time. Oh, gee, that's not so good. Ten thousand dollars. Hey, that's grand larceny. Yeah, and the cops are probably getting pretty sore about not pinning it on somebody. Now, look, here comes old Gus, fresh from the Inquisition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Homeboy. Gus. Uh, hey, Gus. Yeah, Mr. Osborne? Are they playing questions and answers in there again, Gus? Ah, uh, yeah. There was you this time, there was you that time. The only time I got to sleep when they called me down here for this. <laughs> What for would I want to steal money for? I got a wife. Fine wife. 
poor kid. I steal money, I go to jail. They starve. But for would I steal? Sure, sure, guess. But I know why you're so worked up about it. Yeah? You probably had to admit where you were last night between 12 and 1 o'clock. How come you know that, where I was? Go on. Everybody in the store knows that, Gus. It's a standing joke. Everybody knows you eat your lunch every morning between 12 and 1. They know you go up to the 13th floor and stretch out on one of those divans in the Louis the 15th room, the classiest in the joint. Okay, so what's wrong with that? I got to eat. Why not in style? Sure, only for that hour. Anybody could come in and move out the other 12 floors and you'd never know it. All right, so what? Maybe that is when somebody stole money. I do not know. I only know I did not steal. And this is the only time I got to sleep when they have to go asking me questions. <laughs> what a character. Hey, uh, is that true about his breakfast from 12 to 1? Sure. <laughs> There's a night watchman for you. <laughs> That probably explains why they're so sure the thief is somebody inside the store. Somebody who knows about Gus and what time he won't be on this floor. Yeah, could be. Uh Uh-oh, that's Humboldt. Yes, Mr. Humboldt. Yes. It's right away, sir. (laughs) Just as I thought. It's my turn now. Well, if I start screaming, you'll know he's putting me on the rack. Okay, I'll bring a branding iron to your rescue. Don't laugh yet. You'll probably be next. If Humboldt really decides to catch a thief, he'll catch one by hook or crook. Merry Christmas, Mike. Oh, now, what's the matter? You don't seem as happy as you were. Something happened to dampen the Christmas spirit, maybe? Something you can't describe, can't even put your finger on? Just a funny sinking feeling? Forget it. George Osborne has been in and out of Humboldt's office and almost the whole day has gone by and nothing's happened. And everything seems to have calmed down. In fact, it's George's turn to have the Christmas spirit. I really didn't expect it this year, but there it was in my pay envelope. Nice and crisp and green. With the best Christmas wishes of the J.C. Devers stores. Oh, gee, that's swell, George. Yeah, real honest to gosh Christmas bonus. I can sure use it. <laughs> Who couldn't? I don't know whether you'll get one or not, Mike. You've only been here six months. Then maybe... Uh, By the way, why don't you mosey in and pick up your pay? It's almost 9 o'clock. We close in five minutes. Well, I guess I'd better wait for Mr. Humboldt to call me. Golly, I thought we'd get paid earlier. Still haven't bought Elaine's present. Ah, well, don't worry. Most of the smaller stores will still be open for a couple of hours. Yeah, sure. But I I thought I'd get her something she liked real well in a little store up on 10th Avenue. Oh, well, it'll be open till late. Say, I wonder if they found out anything about the 10 grand. Boy, they've really questioned everybody around, though. They didn't question me. In fact... They've never questioned me about it. I don't quite understand that. Oh, well, I don't know. I guess you got such an honest face or something. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. Yes, Mr. Humboldt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll send him right in. Maybe we spoke too soon. He wants to see you. Oh? On the other hand, maybe he just wants to hand you your Christmas bonus in person. After all, you are getting to be the fair-haired boy around here these days. I better go in. <laughs> you might even be in line for a promotion. You can't tell. Okay, okay. You wanted to see me, Mr. Humble? Yes, oh, yes, Cobb, Cobb. Uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, thank you, sir. Cobb, you've been with us uh, six months now. Yes, sir. And I must admit that in that time you've demonstrated an admirable aptitude for the work. Thanks, Mr. Humble. Yes, in fact, there's been some discussion of raising your salary, promoting you. I even talked to Mr. Prentice, the manager, about it myself. Well, thanks, Mr. Humboldt. Yes, and that's why I regret very much to tell you this. I must inform you that we're forced to dispense with your services as of tonight. Dispense? You... You mean I'm fired? I'm afraid that's it. Yeah, your two weeks' pay is in this envelope. Wait a minute. I'm bed so good. Why am I being fired? I'm not at liberty to offer any explanations. I have my orders just the same. It's got something to do with this missing money, hasn't it? I told you. This is your way of telling me you think I took it, isn't it? Now, call my. That's it, isn't it, Mr. Humboldt? You've questioned everyone else in the department. With me, you figure questions are unnecessary, don't you? Well, since you put it that way, Cobb, naturally we must take into consideration your past. You know about my prison record. I told you about it. What I've told you about if I was going to steal again? I'm not accusing you of stealing again. I only say we can't afford to take chances. We simply find it advisable. All right. I understand. I understand a lot of things now, Mr. Humboldt. Thanks. 
Thanks, Mr. Humboldt, for the Christmas bonus. Hey, hey, Mike. Mike, wait a minute. Well, did you get it? Did he give you a Christmas bonus? Yeah. Yeah, I got a Christmas bonus, all right. Hey, what's up? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'll, I'll tell you about it later. I'm leaving now. Oh, yeah, you're in a hurry. Uh, but wait, uh, I, I almost forgot. Uh, with my bonus, I can pay you that 30 bucks I owe you. Huh? Here. 10, 20, 30. That ought to help with that present for your wife, huh? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, George. Thanks. Merry Christmas, Mike. <laughs> yeah. That premonition you had this morning was right, wasn't it? That funny, sinking feeling. Now you know, don't you, Mike? You knew it all the time, really. All this past six months, you've been kidding yourself. That dream bubble has burst. Merry Christmas, Mike. The crowds are still cheerful on the street. The windows are still bright and gay, and the holly still spices the air. But you don't see or feel or smell. No, there's only the sensation of a chill wind cutting you to the bone as you wander the dark streets, not knowing or caring where you are. Hello, Michael. Merry Christmas. Huh? Oh. Oh, hello, Reverend Ewart. I... I didn't see you. So I noticed. I was just getting home from my last-minute shopping. Won't you come in for a moment? A cup of tea, perhaps? Why, no, I, I... Oh, come on. I haven't seen you for a long time. That is for a chat. Besides, it's chilly out. A cup of hot tea will warm you up. You look as if you could stand warming up, Michael. Come in. No, no, I, I've got to get along. Oh, come now. That lovely wife of yours won't miss you for a few more minutes. I tell you, I've got to go. Very well, Michael. I won't keep you. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Reverend. I didn't mean to, you know... Well, I understand, son. You're troubled. Is there anything I can do? No. No, I'm all right. Well, I know you too well, Michael. I've known you all my life. Now, I've, I've helped you before, haven't I? Why... I don't know. I don't know whether you did or not. All that stuff you told me about turning over a new leaf, forgetting the past... I believed it. Oh, yes, of course. Hal, maybe you should have told it to some other people instead of me. It just don't work, Reverend. It just don't work. All that stuff about being good and doing good. It Hal, does. it don't pay you off. It does, Michael. It does. You must believe that. Even a little good done brings a great reward. Yeah, maybe to some people. Only maybe some of us are behind an eight ball we can't get around. Michael, please come in. I feel I must talk to Not you. Not tonight, maybe... Reverend. Got all the talking I can stand. Now I'm going to do my own thinking. I know what I'm going to do. You can bet your sweet life I know just what I'm going to do. Yes, your mind is made up now, isn't it, Mike? Humboldt made it up for you, didn't he? You hate him, don't you, Mike? And all the smug people like him who've never done a stretch in stir. They're your enemies, aren't they, Mike? Whether you wanted them to be or not. And you're just one of the cell rats. Okay, if that's the way it is, that's the way you'll play it. What's that? Footsteps following you? Maybe if you stop by this lighted window. Yeah, you were right, Mike. They're following you, all right, two of them. You saw them duck into that doorway when you stopped and turned around. Tail me. They got dicks tailing me. Why, sure, you dope. They wouldn't let you just walk out of there. They think you took the money. They're going to tail you, hound you, track you down. Okay. Okay, if they think I took the money, I'll give them reason to. This time, I will take it. You are listening to The Whistler, brought to you by your friend, the Signal Oil Company. Marketers of famous Signal Gasoline, your best buy today. Remember to let every go signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Christmas, Mike. <laughs> a very merry Christmas, isn't it? Six months of going straight and you've given it up. You're going back. 
back to the store and get your share of those days' receipts. Yes, it's all so simple, isn't it, Mike? It'll soon be 12 o'clock midnight, and old Gus will be up in the Louis 15th room on the 13th floor. The safe in Humboldt's office will be a cinch. You've seen it many times. And as for the two dicks tailing you now, it'll be duck soup to shake them. Duck soup. That's right. You're heading up 10th Avenue now. You can double back and... What's wrong, Mike? Why are you stopping? Could it be that tune, the brightly lighted window, the old man standing back there? Of course, now you remember. 10th Avenue. This is old Mr. Samuel's little store. This is it, where you're going to buy Elaine her Christmas present. And there it is. What you heard, the music box, sitting on the counter next to the open door, playing... Good evening, Michael, and Merry Christmas. Hiya, Mr. Samuels. You came in just in time. I was just about to close up. I guess down at your big store, you've been closed for a long time. But here, well, we little fellows have to stay open to get all the business we can. What can I do for you? I, uh, is this the music box that Elaine likes so well? Ah, yes, that is the one. She was very taken with it. Ah, her eyes sparkled when she looked at it. Yeah, there's a powder puffer. Something inside, isn't it? That is right. And when you open it, it plays the little tune. So. Yes, she was saying how it was her favorite tune. Okay. How much is it? Well, it's uh, it's usually priced at 75, but I'll give it to you and the young lady for 50. 50 dollars? Well, yes. You see, it's a genuine antique. And it's the best thing I have in this store. Well, I'm I'm sorry, but that's more than I figured out. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, too. I I would have let you have it for less if I could, but 50 is the lowest. Sure, sure. Well, okay, forget it. Well, I'm sorry. Come back again. Now what's the matter, Mike? Why are you stopping? Could it be you can't make up your mind? Could it be you're thinking about the music box, about Elaine, about Christmas? Yes. This may be your last Christmas with her, you know. Your last chance to give her a decent present with clean money, money you earn. It might be a nice gesture, eh, Mike? A little token of all that might have been. Oh, Mr. Samuels, I'll take it. Wrap it up as a gift and I'll take it. Merry Christmas, Mike. That's what's written across the package. It was going to be a symbol for a wonderful new life, wasn't it? And now it's an ironic farewell. Your last attempt at doing good, as Reverend Hewitt called it. Too bad it won't bring you that great reward, he promised. It won't have a chance, because there are those two dicks still following you. And you, you're heading for J.C. Deaver's department store, office of Henry Humble, and the interior of its safe. It's almost 12 midnight, and you'll have to duck those guys. 30 quick. girls, 30. The greatest little show in town, starring Tootsie Laverne and her 30 raving beauties. A new show just started. Only 40 cents. Take it, mister. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. 40 cents. Thank you, sir. A new show just started. Hurry, 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 ladies and gentlemen. It's the greatest You're doing great, Mike. Those dicks will follow you in, but you won't be there, will you? No. You're heading for that exit sign down at the side. Through the curtain, push out through the door, and there you are. In the alley. And free. Okay. Now, up to the street. Lose yourself in the crowd. Turn down fifth toward the store. You're okay now. No need to look back. Or is there? They're there. You didn't shake them after all. They were wise to that trick, and they were waiting for you outside the theater. Yes, you should have known. Now what? Maybe you've got an idea. Yes. A good idea. Uh, honey, why not lead them to the store? Sure, that's where they expect you to go. But beat them there and hide, down in the freight dock, behind one of those big crates. They'll never find you in that mess. Then when they get tired looking, you'll be able to slip in and do the job. How's that? Brilliant. Yes, brilliant. Yes, here's the 
next door. And there they are, a quarter of a block behind. When you hit the alley, you'll run for it. Make a dash back to the back. And you'll be so far ahead then, they won't know whether you got in or not. And you'll fool them entirely. You'll have them searching the whole store. Okay, here it is. Okay, you made it. You left them way behind. Here's the freight, Doc. Okay, come on, coppers. Just try and find me in here. I told you he knew we were following him. Sure, sure. But let's not waste time. We had plenty of time to get in, probably with his employee's key. Okay, okay. Get out your skeleton and let's go in after him. Worked like a charm, didn't it, Mike? You're sitting here in your crate, comfortably waiting, while they search the entire store. They've been there long enough to do it. It's almost one. If they don't hurry, you'll have Gus to worry about. Not that that's too much of a worry. But wait, hold it. Well, that does it. Yeah, too bad. Hey, flash your light around. We could have ducked into one of these crates here. Yeah, 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 but we'd never find him in that mess. He could play hide and seek with us there for days. Yeah, you're right. I guess we might as well call it a day. It's a fine way to spend Christmas Eve anyway. Come on, let's go home. Okay, I'm right beside you. <laughs> Well, Mike, Merry Christmas. This is better than you expected. They're leaving, actually going away, leaving the place to your tender mercies. You won't have to dodge them coming out. They aren't going to camp out in Humboldt's office. They're actually walking away, down the alley, and you're set. Good Lord, the music box. Something's wrong that's going. I can't stop. I can't. Hey, hey, Joe. Joe, listen. Yeah, I hear it. Come on, right over here. I gotta stop it. I gotta... <laughs> Hey, right here. In this crate. Too late. Okay, Cobb. We finally cornered you. Come on out. No use hiding in there now, Cobb. Come on, come on, come on. We want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, I know. I got the idea. Okay. Okay, you got me. Yeah. Thanks for the music. Led us right to the dance floor. Yeah. That's the great reward the minister was talking about. Great. I don't get you. Oh, you wouldn't. It's a private little joke on me. Yeah? Well, that music maybe did you a big favor, Cobb. Favor? That's right. Maybe you'll see what I mean if you'll answer a few questions for us. I don't see why I should. You got nothing to be afraid of, kid, if you'll just answer a couple of questions straight. I'll answer one. I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with okay, it. Okay, okay. You had nothing to do with it. We didn't ask you that question. We'll answer this. You bought that music box at a store on 10th Avenue a while ago, didn't you? You know I did. You saw me buy it. And you paid for it with two 20s and a 10, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, part of that money was marked. It was money that had been stolen from Deaver's department store. I tell you, it wasn't stolen. That was the dough I got in my pay envelope. All of it? Didn't somebody else give you part of it? No, I just earned the whole thing. Didn't George Osborne give you part of it? Osborne? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh. He paid me $30. He owed me. Okay. Now, this is very important. How did Osborne pay you? In what denomination of bills? Well, I... Yeah. Yeah, I remember. He gave me three tens. Tens? You're sure? Sure, I'm sure. And the 20s came to you in your pay envelope, huh? Yeah. You'll swear to that in court? Of course. Okay. That does it. Thanks, Cobb. Hey, wait. You mean that's all you wanted me for? It was enough. You just proved for us who stole that 10 grand from the store. And the way you were acting, we almost thought it was you. We hadn't have known better all the time. That's not the end of the story. The Whistler will bring it to you in just a moment. Meantime, Signal Oil Company joins with 1,800 Signal gasoline dealers throughout the West from Canada to Mexico in hoping that this has been a good Christmas for you. It wasn't the Christmas we had all hoped and prayed for. There were too many empty places at the table, too many empty places in our hearts. As we look back, we may wonder if perhaps we didn't give quite enough, not quite enough of our effort of our money, and of our blood, which can mean life itself to a boy at the front. 
Yet even the regrets that may tinge this season's gladness can prove its greatest blessing if they fire us to new determination, to new and greater effort through the coming year until our prayers are finally answered and peace again returns to heal this confused and torn world. Yes, if, as this Christmas of 1944 draws to a close, we will rededicate ourselves to this, our job, we may, each of us, hasten the realization of that ancient promise, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, quite surprising, isn't it? The police didn't suspect Mike at all. You see, it was this way. Because of his record, the cops began to tail Mike in the very beginning, when the money first began to be missed. Twice they had him under observation at the very time the money was stolen, so they knew he didn't do it. But they kept watching him in the hope he would lead them to the real thief, and he did. Yes, because when things got hot, the thief finally tried to frame Mike by giving him some of the stolen money. Marked money this time. George Osborne? Oh, no. In fact, Osborne almost gummed things up by paying his debts. The detectives hadn't counted on that. That's why they had to be sure which bills Osborne gave Mike. The tens weren't marked. The twenties were. The twenties Mike got in his pay envelope from Humboldt. Yes, Henry Humboldt, the office manager. You see, things were getting too hot for him. The trail was getting too close. He knew the money was marked, and he knew the detectives were watching Mike. So he gave him some of the marked bills in his severance pay, trying to frame him. It couldn't have worked, of course, but Humboldt didn't know that. And neither did Mike. And Mike almost did something he'd have regretted all his life. He almost went back to a life of crime. Yes, if the music box hadn't have jammed and started playing just when it did, and the detectives had gone off, Mike's life would have gone down the skid. Because it did play when it did. Well... Next week, he'll be back at the store in a better job. Yes, and he got a Christmas bonus, too. They saw to that after Humboldt was arrested. And all because the music box played. Maybe that's why Mike says... <laughs> no, sir. That music box sits right there on the table where everybody can see it. <laughs> Darling, I really think it means as much to you as it does to me. Oh, I guess maybe it does, Elaine. Just like the Reverend Hewitt says, a little good brings a great reward. Yeah. The rest of my life, that little gadget's going to mean a Merry Christmas. Darling, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Mike. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, the Signal Oil program will bring you another strange tale by The Whistler. The Signal Oil program is broadcast for your entertainment by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal's famous Go Father gasoline and motor oil, and by your neighborhood Signal Oil dealer, who is at your service daily to keep your car running for the duration. The Signal Oil program, produced by George W. Allen, with music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking for your friend, the Signal Oil Company, and suggesting once again that you let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>